It's important to know which electronic parts to desolder so that you don't accidentally throw away some expensive or even exotic components without realizing it. I'm going to show you which components you should salvage, which ones are useful for your future projects and which ones are expensive or even rare. Don't forget one man's trash is another man's treasure. Now one of the most common type of components in old circuit boards are capacitors. They're everywhere, and the reason they're everywhere is that they're important, and you need them also. The most common type of capacitor are electrolytic, mostly used for energy storage and filtering. I always salvage these because I always need them. However, be careful. These capacitors can suffer from common faults such as drying out or leaking. So before you salvage them, perform a visual inspection. Are they damaged or bulging? Do they show signs of leaking? Even if they look okay and you remove them, you should always test them before you use them again, which you can do with a cheap component tester. Other types of capacitors like film capacitors are also useful. I also take those. Now what about input filters? These are the input sections which you will find in most power supplies. They often contain fuses, X and Y capacitors, filters, mobs, relays and other stuff. These are great because all devices need some type of input filter and therefore these components will always come in useful. Sometimes in the trash you will find whole power supplies completely intact and working. If they are working I usually keep them and use them for other projects. The small mobile phone chargers which plug straight into the wall are low power 5 volt power supplies but they have a very important feature and that is that they are isolated. This means they are very useful if you need an isolated 5 volt power supply for IC chips on a board you're making. What about SMD components? Is it worth it to desolder the hundreds of tiny components you can find on old motherboards for example? Well, simply ask yourself, do you need them? Keep in mind that basic components like resistors and diodes can be bought new quite cheaply. But it's always good to have stuff as a backup. So if your stocks are low, old PC motherboards are a great source for SMD components. When it comes to miscellaneous components like buzzers, battery holders, fuses and fuse holders, buttons, etc. Personally, I take these only if I need them. A component often overlooked are heat sinks. I always salvage these because these can be expensive when bought new and they never get old or break simply because they're a piece of metal. You always need an array of different shapes and sizes of heat sinks for your new project. Something quite surprising which you should salvage are nuts, bolts and screws. These can be quite expensive to buy new and you always need a large variety of different types and sizes. Should you desolder connectors? Connectors can be both expensive and cheap depending on what you buy. If you're working on audio devices then you may be interested in salvaging audio jacks. If you repair PCs you may like to salvage PC connectors etc. Personally if I already have these or I'm not working on them then they go back in the trash for someone else to salvage. Always salvage things based on what you're working on or intend to work on in the future. So is it worth it to salvage bits of wire? Personally, I always need bits of wire for experimental prototypes. However, I also buy new wire for professional projects. I always take exotic stuff like high voltage cable or heat resistant cable like this one which came from an old oven. High frequency transformers for example have very nice twisted wire on them which can be salvaged. But it's difficult to get the correct length and thickness for your future designs. Should you salvage power components like transistors, MOSFETs and IGBTs? Personally, I only take parts from the TO220 package and above because smaller packages are cheap to buy new. Sometimes I'll leave the old transistors, but if they are high power or high voltage, I will take them. However, the old transistors can still be useful if you need a quick emitter follower, regulator or oscillator. What about the expensive and abundant IC chips you always find on old circuit boards? The problem with IC chips is that they are usually very specific. In my experience, it's only worth to salvage chips if you know what they are, what they do, have a data sheet for them, and you have an intended use for them. However, whatever you find, there are usually newer chips available, which are tougher, smaller, and faster. Now, what about LCDs? There are a huge amount of different types of these things out there. However, some of them require specific chips to be able to interface with them. Before you take the LCDs, it's important to know what type of LCD it is. Is there a datasheet for it? Do you know how to use it? 
Otherwise, it may take up a significant amount of your time trying to be able to reuse it. However, if you know what you're doing, then electronics trash can be a great source of LCDs or other types of screens. So should you take transformers? The problem with salvaging transformers is that it's difficult to find data sheets for them, but you can always measure them yourself and rewind them for your own projects. Even the old iron transformers are still used in some applications today. Ferrite transformers and chokes are very common, useful and expensive to buy new, so I always take these types of components. When it comes to components like small resistors and diodes, usually I don't take them because they're cheap to buy in bulk. Sometimes the most interesting thing about old electronic devices is not the electronics inside, but the case itself. Sometimes I see a nice case and think to myself, I would love to use that case for a future project. It's a nice idea, but it has two main problems. Firstly, you need some way to make a new front panel for all your switches and screens. Secondly, it's difficult to make a project to fit a box. It's much easier to find a box which fits your project. But some cases are just too nice to throw away. Now we come to the expensive components. This includes anything which is simply large, unusual, or has a high voltage rating. For example, these flyback transformers can be found in old cathode ray tube TVs. It's very easy to generate high voltages with them and they are very popular amongst enthusiasts these days. And because of that, they are expensive. Sometimes instead of flyback transformers for cathode ray tube power supplies, I have found these things which are actually voltage multipliers. Quite rare to find in the trash. Always be on the lookout for strange components on circuit boards. These are high voltage transformers found in flat screen plasma TVs. I always take these because they are small, compact and useful. Another example of rare trash components are these large packet MOSFET or IGBTs. These things can handle huge amounts of power. And if you are very lucky to find some of these in the trash, then definitely take them. If you ever see one of these on an old circuit board, then salvage it. It's a current probe. These can be very expensive and are definitely worth taking. By the way, I showed in a previous video how to make your own current probe, which I will link above. Anything large or oversized is always worth it to salvage because the physical size simply makes them expensive to buy new. Like these large capacitors, 50 Hz transformers, ferrite cores and resistors for example, all great finds. Here, this is a ceramic wire wound variable resistor from 0 to 50 ohms, partially damaged but very expensive to buy new. Even if you don't need a new large transformer, they're also great for weight training. Guys, I hope you found this video useful. Let me know in the comments if I've missed any components out. If you would like to help the channel, you can do so using the links below or by simply clicking the like button. Thanks a lot. See you later.